Hi, Bigfoot Nation. This is Coach Geary to discuss the December 2nd game against Newton, where we lost 46 to 39. It was a game that we led as late as three minutes remaining in the third quarter, but Newton pulled away late in the third quarter and into the early fourth. I'll make a few of these Coach's Cut videos throughout the year. I try to do most of them at the beginning of the season so that we can iron out some of the bad habits. Later in the year, I'll probably just post game footage, but for now, I have the time and there's a lot for us to work on, so let's get started. One of Coach Wooden's famous quotes is that failure to prepare is preparing to fail. For those players that studied the videos that were posted over the last two weeks, as well as came to practice and mastered some of the concepts, I saw some very positive signs as they applied them in the game. And for the rest of you, make sure that you take some inspiration and advice and make sure that you are prepared as well. These are the five keys to success that we discussed at the beginning of the season and that we return to at each and every practice. And this is how we'll measure our performance after every game. I'm not going to issue formal grades on these five key dimensions, but take a look at them and decide how well did you do? How well did the team do? Did we minimize unforced turnovers? Did we have superior speed and competitiveness throughout the game? Did we exhibit offensive IQ by spacing the floor and moving well and making great shots? Did we show defensive IQ by doing our job at boxing out, helping on defense, closing out, and pressuring the ball handler? And lastly, did we function well as a team with an energy, athleticism, and will to win? We built the five-point lead in the third quarter and had the lead as late as three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Well, how did we get there? In the first half, we only had four turnovers. We only had one turnover in the first quarter, and we also stole the ball nine times. We had pretty good shot selection, I'd say above average. We had easier shots than Newton did. We had shots inside of five feet, we had layups, and we had free throws that we missed. It's possible we could have been up 9 to 12 points had just a couple of those baskets gone in. But with three minutes remaining in the third, we let it get away. There was a stretch where we had seven turnovers in eight possessions. To my eye, they were all unforced by the defense. They were very big energy drops on defense, and I recorded no steals in the third quarter. Midway through the third quarter, Newton started crashing the boards harder. When our energy dropped, we lost our dog. We had little fight left, and Newton slowly chipped away, took the lead, and put it away at the end. We had two Bigfoot players earn notches in the last game. The first is the Bigfoot Boy Scout patch given out to a player who's prepared, that understands the systems and techniques that we are teaching and applies them during the game. That goes to Ellery. And the Bigfoot Harry Paw. This is an award given out for toughness, grit, and competitiveness. And this goes to Benji Schwartz. Congratulations. I saw in practice how much Ellery was focused on his defensive weak side rotations, and it paid off in the game. Ellery had so many steals and rebounds, not because he was exceptionally quick or clever, but because he just positioned himself in the right place. <laughs> I like the way Gautama helps on the rotation here. We built the lead by protecting the ball, but starting midway through the third quarter, we started to give it away. The first type of turnover I'm going to talk about 
is setting the offense too close to the three-point line. We've discussed this many times. When we run the slot machine, the slots have to set higher so there's more space and so that the wingman can be on the wing instead of being pushed down into the corners. Let's see the positive results when Cam sets the offense higher up on the floor. We have discussed the danger of handling the ball in the corners. It is the easiest place on the floor to get trapped. Well, we've discussed it at practice. Now let's see what happens during a game. Many turnovers are the result of bad technique by the receiving player. Although the passer will get blamed and credited with the turnover, they are often the fault of the receiver who does not properly separate from the defender and yet still puts their hands up saying they're ready for a pass. We have trained you to check in and out with a push to the defender, and that's a real push, one that they'll feel to create separation, and if the defender chases you, you can back cut. However, if you have your hands up looking for a pass and you have not created separation, you're inviting the defending player to poach and steal the ball. Let's first look at two examples of decent separation. These are both by Ellery. They're not bad. They could be firmer, but at least they're effective. <laughs> This type of turnover is perhaps the most frustrating because it results after we have either stolen the ball or made a rebound and everyone runs up the court leaving the poor player with the ball surrounded by two opponents. So it is going to be very important that our ball handlers be more present and more demanding of the ball so that they can manage it up the court. Now if there's a fast break that's great. Anyone can push the ball. However, if the defense is back I'd rather have ball sent back to a guard so that it can be brought up the court safely. Here Newton is completely back to defend the fast break so Alex should slow it up, find Rohan and reset the offense safely. We get a little lucky with our talented quarterback Hayden who connects this pass but it is highly risky 
I think we'd be better off having a guard demand the ball and bring it safely up the court. What happened to our energy in the second half? I'm going to show you four clips. The first one is going to be a really nice closeout of a jump shooter. Very disruptive, meant to throw off his shot. The second clip is going to show no challenge to the jump shot. Then we're going to see first quarter defense, active, bouncing feet, followed by third quarter defense, dead feet, dead hands, dead eyes. I'm going to wrap up the discussion shortly and put on some music. I'm also going to have some clips on our rebounding problems, the lack of boxing out by most of our players. We're also going to see some good things. We did take our layups hard into the body of the defenders. We drew fouls and got three-point plays. And finally, there is a bunch of other cool plays that we'll end with. We also have the questions. We'd like the kids to put their answers in the YouTube comments to show me that they studied the material and understood it. As always, those that answer early and correctly will get a prize. Please do not copy each other's answers. Okay, the questions for everybody are, if you could fix one thing or try one new thing out at the next game based on what you've seen in these videos, what would that thing be? And then I have the following questions specific to players. Rohan, Hayden, and Sam, please comment on either the Wooden quote or the Brady quote at the end of the video. Tell me what you think, whether you agree or disagree. For Ellery, Ben, Gautama, and Max, give me some ideas on how we should handle balls that are trapped in the corner. How can we get them out safely without turning them over? And for Yosef, Cam, and Alex, the question is, why do you think our energy dropped in the third quarter? And what should we do in the next game if the energy drops again? See you all at the next practice.
Cause I feel it coming creeping again Cause I feel it coming creeping again